this is the absolute worst case I have ever heard of. Worst discrimination case, just worst case in gen ever. I mean, I've heard of many other cases, but involving people with autism, this is the worst case I have ever heard of. And having autism myself, I decided to advocate for people with autism who are not treated fairly in society. I started this campaign a couple of years ago and I am still continuing strong. I'm also, you know, an advocate for the environment, but that's not important. What is important is we help this man. His name is Paul Madrowski and there are wonderful people who are representing him by running this blog for him that he writes on paper and it gets put out on the internet. Paul Madrowski has no access to the internet. He is repeatedly uh, punished there for uh, talking about the horrible prison conditions. They've actually punished him, according to one of his uh, blogs, for... Let's see if I can find it. I think it's blog number 70, I believe. I believe it's for... Uh, editor. Yeah, it's, it's titled Editor Note. Paul taken to Roundhouse. No, that's not it, but... That doesn't sound good. Uh, but what happened is, because Paul is advocating for himself and for others in prison, he's repeatedly punished there. He is uh, not treated very well. He is, uh, there's even a pose that is, depicts his uh, discrimination and abuse. Well, I have a petition on change.org, and you'll see one of his... Uh, Blogs. I mean, I can sit here hours and hours reading this blog, but I basically will read you the core of what happened. Right here, on the night of April 28th, I was arrested by numerous heavily armed police. And he actually wished, they, now he wished they shot him dead. And he said, because I don't want to, it's not fair that I have to spend the rest of my life for a crime I didn't commit. Night of April 28th, on the, on, April, on the 28th of April, I was arrested by numerous heavily armed police. They just seemed as willing to shoot me dead and claimed the mass murder was was closed as in taking me for questioning. Although I had nothing to do with the murders, I was not talking to them without an attorney and immediately asked for one. As I was being yanked out of my car and thrown face down on the asphalt of Archer Avenue in Chicago. However, police had no intention of adhering to my Miranda rights and I've endured hours upon hours of intimidation, threats, and physical abuse. Eventually, I made a few comments to my interrogators, which were largely twisted and later became the basis of the prosecution's theory of accountability. John Robertson fabricated the story of how, while armed with a firearm, Robert told me he was going to kill Dean Fawcett and showed me how to uh, and asked me to borrow my car. Although I was grilled about the Barrington murder for two days, only a couple of questions relevant to the parent, uh, Palatine case was asked. I remember towards the end of my interrogation, John Kiziel asked me if I had anything to say about the mass murder. I ignored him, like I did most of the time, and something like, Oh, come on, you can't even answer whether or not you killed those people at the restaurant? Finally, with him staring me down, I said, Fine, I did not do it. The police arrested a former employee of the Brown Chicken's restaurant the day after the crime. His name was Martin Blake, and he was interrogated until the 11th of January. Uh, so really, uh, what happened was the murderer, the the person accuses, accused uh, Paul uh, Madrowski of the Palatine Massacre, which was later actually solved. Two people were arrested, DNA evidence was linked, whole nine yards, case closed. It was many, many years later. Uh, the police are, uh, and he was called, he was also held in, Com in Com Comunicado. There's another case, and it was titled My Arrest. I'll get to that right now. There is no doubt in my mind, my suspicion in the Browns' chicken murders affected my arrest, prosecution, convincing, and sentence to natural life without parole. I blame less the perpetrators of the horrific crime than those who accuse me of it. Accuse me of it. Had Robert Rose not comprised to framing of the mass murder, Nearly everything would have been different. The over 100 strong Palatine, the over 100 strong Palatine task force, under tremendous pressure by the state attorney, office, and media, would have not been involved. Instead, detectives from a small town of Barrington would have been in charge of the investigation. Those police would have not questioned me after I requested an attorney, 
and had no reason to viola violate my Miranda rights or manipulate anything I said. Uh, st had I still been charged with murder, after Rose admitted she and her husband lied to prevent me from going back to prison, the C would have, have dropped the charges against me. Even though, even had the state attorneys not, there is little chance a jury would have convicted me on what amounts to guilt by association. A judge who would have uh, been under no political pressure to sentence me to life in prison without the possibility of parole, particularly when the actual killer was acquitted. He may have even had the courage to grant a direct verdict or overturn my, any jury's conviction. My life would have been radically different these past 20 years if not for the false accusations in the Palatine Massacre. All I can do now is hope the courts or the governors intervene on my behalf. That guy got acquitted. Yet, Paul Madrowski is is a, in sitting the rest of life in jail for the accusation of providing a car to the guy who got acquitted. What the hell is wrong with our society? I am beyond pissed. This has to go to court. I am going to advocate for this guy until the end. I have autism, and I'm proud of it. He has autism, and he's proud of it. We're all proud of our condition. It's not fair that he has to suffer because of two punks and assholes who unfairly accuses him of, accuse him of a crime. It's not fair. The Madrowskis cried frequently as they and other witnesses described how Paul Madrowski suffers suffered from autism and speech problem as a child. How he was ostracized by other children and how he seemed to lack normal emotional pain responses. Autism is for life, so he's still autistic, no matter what. And here, they said that he had cold and unfeeling. That's what prosecutions would usually say about people with Asperger's, because of normal and delayed emotional responses. I mean, look, I have Asperger's. I do. And I, and I could tell you for a fact, that uh, when we're depressed, when we're upset, we, sh we show no emotional response. Because we're formulating thoughts, we're formulating, like we're thinking deep, we're deep in thought, and, and sometimes, my mom always describes that I have a very serious, and sometimes expressionless face when I get upset. When I'm sad. I mean, come on. Convict a guy for something you didn't do. It's just sad. If you feel how I feel, or believe that life in prison without parole, is not right for simply uh, supposedly donating or uh, giving a car to your friend who killed somebody is not fair please sign my petition i will um i will leave it in the link below and on the and on the page itself i will spread this petition and this video everywhere thank you for watching have a great day bye